Lochloy, Duke King Steps, but in advance of that you turn off Montgomery Drive to go to the site. The site is, is here in the location plan. We're looking at Lochloy Road. We're about halfway along the distance from the traffic light junction and the site access leading to this development. Essentially, the scale of development that's happened in this area has necessitated a degree of mitigation on traffic safety and that is why traffic calming measures have been implemented on the road. Uh, these are not successful uh, in the extent in the way of driver behaviour uh, and there is a need to strengthen and improve these same features but just try and make sure that the drivers observe the highway code and the instruments. So, as part of the mitigation with this development, the developer has offered to enhance the traffic calming measures that we've got here to slow traffic down, to allow manoeuvrability on this road, because it is increasing in traffic flows over the years. Mark, would you like to add anything to that? Just to say that the, uh, Ken's report has got a condition on to clarify the detail of the mitigation that we do. The starting point is that at the minute the, the traffic calming features of these uh, give ways now they're not conventional in terms of their operation in that they're drawn, they're, they're set up with give ways on both approaches which is not usually the conventional approach. Um, they, they work reasonably well in low traffic routes uh, but as traffic builds up you tend to have to establish more of a priority establish so that's one of the things that we're looking at with the developer is establishing priority of direction so that it's clear to drive to the approach who has priority. Okay. okay. Any questions? You better? Oh, this road here will be the golf course up here. They had competitions uh, last year. There was a competition and all the visitors parked on this side of the road all the way down, which enforced everybody trying to get up and down the road into a right pickle. Me in particular having to actually mount the pavement on the golf course side to get past because there was no way of getting past the volume of traffic going up and down. Secondly, when you get to the lights at the top of Lockboy Road, sometimes you could be sitting back as far as the golf course waiting to get out, and there's only two or three cars that are allowed to exit from Lockboy because the A96 is so busy you run through the middle of the junction and block the when you're coming from Sainsbury's, you come round, you've got a filter light to let you down Law Floyd. It doesn't come on all the time. That's okay. <coughs> they say you sit behind the traffic lights, but you've got the box in the middle of the road with the arrow for you to go out and turn round. Then you've got the sequence of the lights in the A96 and the lights in Law Floyd are so close together. They're at green and ours are at green. So you start to take away and there's still cars running through the green. Now I've watched them, it's the light sequence. You've set them so close, there will be a bad accident there because the junction is so wide. If their lights are at green, they think it's okay to go across, but it is a huge amount of road to cover that the people in Law Floyd have the right to go out with their lights. So your whole setup for that junction is totally wrong. They need to do something and you're going to increase the traffic from here trying to get out. You, you know, there's something has to be done and the amount of cars that you're seeing on your transport assessment coming out of this area is way off the mark. This is a lot busier than you see. If the members care to look down there now, you can actually see the traffic trying to weave in and out of each other down by the golf course trying to get through from each direction. Okay. And that's hold, hold, middle hold, hold, of the morning. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Members, any members got any questions? Any queries? Sorry, any queries? See, just see the point the ladies raised as regards the existing issues. Yeah. We, we can report that back in the council and ask them to look at. Um, sorry. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. The light sheet is there and other parts of nearly something to it. I think it's a mere sport. We've got a new sport, which is a new camera, a new 
outside their base and get back into the other sheep, which is a big break. You do go off cheap boots on occasion, and uh, if it's too long to go cheap, then it's too steep. Some of what the, the, the lady was telling you is what's called driver behaviour. No, it's but not. Some of it, some, some, some of it, some no, of it is, some of it is. Some of it is. <laughs> I travel this road in the Hold on, hold on. It's nothing to do with driving. It's nothing to do with the driver. Hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, we've taken on your point. We've taken on board your point. It will be reported further back to the Mayor Scott. I'm sorry to carry on on that point, but I've lived here now on this road for 18 years, and over the last I wanted just to clarify a point with the transport official here. You talked about the traffic camming on the road. Traffic camming, my understanding of it, as you're describing here, is primarily to slow down the, the, the speed of traffic. Is that, am I right in thinking that? These things are put in to slow uh, vehicle speeds down right. because, as it pointed out earlier at the last night, that this is also on the national cycle network. Uh, so the traffic is sharing the, the road space with cyclists as well, um, which is not uncommon, but this is just on the national cycle network, so there'll be more cyclists than you would expect to know. Um, the, the, but what they haven't been designed for, the, the traffic cam can also help to manage the flow of traffic, not only on speeds, but the movement of it as well. So at the minute they're designed for calming traffic speeds, but the, what we want to work with the developer on is how they can better manage the movement. And that was my next part of the question was, how, how will it manage a, additional flow to the levels that we're anticipating for this new development? On top of the current development, now all the houses have been occupied where we are. Currently there's uncertainty when you're driving to these features at the minute of who, who moves, who goes in terms of getting through the narrowings. And uh, that works well in calming traffic speeds because drivers tend to be more drive more cautiously because they're not sure whether they're going to go through or the opposing driver's going to go through. If you can put the uh, arrangements in where it's actually clear who has priority, then that will help to flow better flow uh, traffic on there, while still having features in there where it help, will aid with control of speed as well. The point is, oh, is, is, is it an impediment to the floor or not? The current there is currently an impediment to the flow in terms of who has priority. And we're not looking to take out uh, traffic cam, we're looking to adjust it so that it better manages the higher volumes of traffic that will come. Traffic mitigation is very necessary. Traffic mitigation creates necessity as an admission that this road is already overloaded it's no longer safe. So why would we consider adding more traffic into an already congested system that doesn't work? Right, it's an observation you can make, sir. Um, yes. yeah. Can I just ask you, um, you know, talking about increased volume of traffic, is, is, you know, in terms of the, the development plan and what you're, you're talking about, the, the predicted number of extra vehicles, uh, you know, have you taken into account the fact that the majority of homes now have two cars per property, not one, and the fact that um, men being a kind of a... a, a we're, we're in a funny position really because we're in within that commuter belt to Inverness. So most people in there don't work in there. And they're working in Forres or Elgin or they're working in Inverness. So therefore, you, and you've got a, a, a couple, they might not be both working in Inverness. One might be working in Elgin or Forres, one might be working in Inverness. So therefore, you're always going to have two vehicles. So it's not just going to be one car per property, it could be two or three cars per property. So I would like you to take that into consideration as well, and that is to do with the locale of men and where people are often working. Okay. An observation, Mr. Uh, Chair. If this development goes ahead, 115 houses, if you add on the existing houses, the ones that have been built, all the houses along Loft Lloyd Road, you have the best part of a thousand houses with a single access into Nairn. And as the lady says, a lot of these houses are more than one car. So you've got a thousand houses with only one point of access and it causes chaos on the A96. Because every time the lights change to red, 
We've got one more visit to go. Mm -hmm. Our next visit is Ken. Where are View, View Road. I'm, View Road. And we'll come back down to the traffic. Okay. The junction. Right. View Road's the next one. Yep. It's our last one. Okay. Okay. 